Britain should train and equip a citizen army to prepare the country for potential war. That is according to the head of the army, who today said that increasing army numbers in preparation for a potential conflict would need to be a whole-of-nation undertaking. He added that we couldn't rely on our navy and air power, but instead must be able to credibly fight and win wars on land. Joining me now is former head of counterterrorism, Major General Chip Chapman. Hello, Major General. Good to have you on the show. And we're also joined by British Army veteran Simon Weston. Good to see you, Simon. Thank you so much. Let me start with Chip on this one. I mean, it sounds like national service, but not quite national service. I don't think um, many of us will quite understand what a whole of nation undertaking really means. Well, I think you need to go to what Mark Milley, General Mark Milley, the outgoing chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in America said, which sort of is the context for this, really. In 2017, before Ukraine was invaded, he said four things of pertinence here. Firstly, fight the myths that we need to let go are wars will be short. They might not be. They might be long. Secondly, armies fight wars. They don't. Nations fight wars. Thirdly, armies are easy to create. They're not. Fourthly, you win wars from afar just by dropping ordnance. You don't. You need boots on the ground. That is a context for what he said. What he didn't do is call for conscription. His speech was released by the army, not by the MOD, and uh, the MOD then clarified that this, this was not to do with national service. But the pertinent point, he really said, was that regular armies fight war, start wars, particularly if it's a long war, but it is citizen armies that win them because, of course, you need something to replace the first echelon army, which will be destroyed or will have significant casualties in the first days, months or year of the conflict. And we're at near 700 days of conflict in Ukraine. So, so what does that mean when you say citizen armies? What, what is that? I, I, it's still a concept that I think is foreign to many of us and we don't really understand. Who is the citizen army made up of? How are they recruited? How are they trained? How do they fit into normal society? How do you envisage that working? Well, I think you need to remove the word citizen from this. The, it is an army which will be created from those who are in civic society, the civilians. So it's, it's a kind of not helpful the way that he sort of positive this is citizen armies. There's really two concepts here as well, which we've not been good at doing in the last 20 years. The first one is a strategic concept, which we should have always had, did used to have, called regeneration, when you make sure that your equipment, your manpower, and your industrial base is sufficient for the army that you've got at the moment. The second one, which really this plays into, and really this is a sort of strawman paper, that is, it's a draft proposal designed to generate uh, discussion and perhaps new and better ideas is reconstitution. That is, how do you expand your industrial base, your manpower and your equipment? Because a capability is not just a, a number of people. You need the equipment, the training, the infrastructure and sustainability and availability for that with enough bullets, bombs and stuff to keep you going in the field. And, and so... If this were to come about, I, I, I should ask you, first of all, do you think that this is a good idea? Do you accept that there is a need for this? And if you do, how would it be instituted? How could it be constructed and created? And how quickly could it happen? Well, the first thing to say is that, of course, as the head of the army, there's a framing bias from him here because he talked about a pre-war moment. Now, you can reverse that, as I would, and say we're in a long peace and have been in Western Europe since 1945. So how do you reinforce the long peace so that what he talks about is not going to come to pass? The first thing you do is turn the notion of uh, as long as it takes for Ukraine into whatever victory takes, because that means that Russia won't be in a position to do anything. The second thing is re-emphasize re within NATO, because we are one of 31 nations there, shortly 32 with Sweden, that deterrence and defence works. Uh, Article 5, you know, attack on one is an attack on all. But I think there's a subtext here, both in what was said by Admiral Bauer last week in terms of uh, don't assume you're going to be at peace for the next 20 years, and what CGS said, is that in that there are two significant elections this year. The first one is in Russia. That really doesn't matter because that's not an election. It's just Putin really saying that he's going to be president, Putin 5.0. But the second one that does matter is the one in America, particularly if uh, if we have a President Trump who in 2016 in his campaign was talking about Europe and NATO being free loaders. So it's really if you had a disconnection of the uh, transatlantic alliance that there would potentially be problems. But that said, European NATO outspends um, Russia by at least four times 
So the bu budgets are there, even within Europe. It's whether there's um, the capability and willingness to employ it without the Americans being along alongside us in the worst case.